We are live. Welcome to this public meeting of the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Today, we're considering two draft final rules that together would establish mandatory safety standards for all window coverings sold to consumers. Before we start, let me confirm that my colleagues are present. Commissioner Feldman. I'm here. Thank you. Commissioner Trumka. I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Commissioner Boyle. Present. The two draft rules we're considering today aim to prevent the tragic deaths of babies and small children who strangle after getting caught in window cords. The first decisional item is a draft final rule under Section 15J of the Consumer Product Safety Act to deem any of the following a substantial hazard. Hazardous operating cords on stock window coverings, hazardous inner cords on stock and custom window coverings, and the absence of a manufacturer label on stack, stock and custom window coverings. Second proposal is a draft final rule under section seven and nine of the CPSA to establish a safety standard for operating cords for custom window coverings to close a safety gap that was left by the voluntary standard. These rules have been too many years in the making and I'm pleased CPSC staff has been able to bring them to us and we are taking a big step today to close uh, and to protect children from this hidden hazard. So with the, that, we're gonna begin with the draft final rule under 15J of the Consumer Product Safety Act. And we'll start with questions for the staff, if there are any. We have several staff members present in the event there are any questions. With us are Mary House, attorney in a regular affairs division, Office of General Counsel, Dr. Rana Balchi Sinha, Director of the Division of Human Factors, Alex Muscoso, who is Associate Executive Director for Economic Analysis, Dwayne Boniface, Assistant Executive Director for EXHR. Uh, also in attendance are Jason Levine, Executive Director, Austin Schlick, General Counsel, and Alberta Mills, the Commission Secretary. Each commissioner will have up to five minutes for questions, and after questions are complete, we'll then turn to any amendments. Once again, I'm Ryan, everyone, that's perfectly permissible to voice personal opinions on legal issues, but it's not appropriate to discuss any legal advice given us to, the, but to us by the Office of General Counsel outside of an executive session. The legal advice we receive must remain confidential. With that, we're going to turn to the questions for staff, and I personally have no questions. Commissioner Feldman, do you have questions on the 15 uh, other, other than to thank staff for their, their work uh, on, on this standard, I, I, I have no questions either. Great. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Tomka? Yeah, again, um, thank you. This, this is great work. And Commissioner Boyle? I have no questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Hearing no questions, uh, staff is excused for now, and we will begin consideration of the package before us. Now entertain any amendments to the draft final rule under section 15J that is before us. Uh, we'll go in order of seniority and we'll recognize a sponsoring commissioner to introduce our amendment for up to three minutes. On this one, on 15J, I have no amendments. Commissioner Feldman, do you have amendments? I have no amendments. Commissioner Trompka, do you have amendments? I do not. And Commissioner Boyle, do you have amendments? I do not have any amendments, thank you. Hearing no amendments, I move to approve the draft uh, staff drafts, excuse me, the staff's draft final rule to deem hazardous window covering cords a substantial product hazard pursuant to section 15J of uh, the Consumer Product Safety Act and to direct publication of the same in the Federal Register. Is there a second? Second. Second. We now have a second and can move to a vote. Commissioner Feldman, how do you vote? I vote yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tronka? I vote yes. And Commissioner Boyle? I vote yes. And I vote yes as well. So the yeses are four, the noes are zero. The motion to approve staff's draft final rule to deem hazardous window covering cords a uh, substantial product hazard pursuant to Section 15J of the Consumer Product Safety Act. Um, is approved and shall be published in the Federal Register. So with that, we're going to move to our next item, which is the um, rule under Section 7 and 9. 
It's a draft final rule uh, to establish a safety standard for operating cores for custom window coverings. So all these we'll have questions, the staff here to answer questions. Um, each commissioner will have five minutes and uh, then we'll consider any am amendments. So turning to questions for the staff on this one, again, I have no questions. Commissioner Feldman. I have no questions either. Commissioner Trumka. No questions. And Commissioner Boyle. I have no questions. Thank you all. Uh, hearing no questions, staff is excused and we'll begin consideration of the package before us. So we'll now entertain, entertain amendments to the draft final rule under section seven and nine. Um, gonna go uh, start with myself and then in order of seniority and uh, recognize uh, the sponsoring commissioner to introduce their amendments for up to three minutes and then everyone will have a round of questions as well. So I'm going to start with myself. I have one amendment and recognize myself for three minutes to introduce it. Uh, I'm offering an amendment in nature of a substitute to restore the 180 day effective date as set forth in our proposed rule. As I noted during the briefing last month, I find industry's arguments that they need additional time to comply with the rule to be unconvincing. CPSC has been working with industry to improve window blind safety death standards for well over a decade. And industry has had plenty of time to prepare for this rule already, particularly with Canada's similar rule taking uh, being fully enforced as of May of this year. They had years to, to get ready for that as well. Consumers have waited for too long for safe window blinds to come to the US market under our statute. Uh, we should uh, only provide an effective date of more than 180 days if for good cause uh, that it's in the public interest. We can't justify that finding here. And I urge my colleagues to join me in shortening the effective date to 180 days. Uh, is there a second to the amendment? Second. second. Thank you. Having heard a second, we're going to move consideration of this amendment. Other commissioners uh, can ask any questions or make any comments or respect to of amendment and have up to five minutes, multiple rounds necessary. Commissioner Feldman, do you have questions, comments? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate you offering this amendment. I support it. I have no questions. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Trumka. Thank you. I, this amendment corrects the effective date. The, the maximum amount of time that this agency can give industry to comply with our regulations is 180 days. By law, we can only deviate above 180 days if good cause is shown and a later effective date is in the public interest. That's a high bar. We will not violate the law and adopt effective dates longer than six months absent of showing of good cause in public interest. For all the reasons provided in this amendment, there is not good cause for a longer effective date, and it is not in the public interest to needlessly delay a strong safety rule that will save children's lives. Manufacturers have been on notice of this rulemaking for over a year already. Solutions to the hazard posed by window coverings have already been developed and applied, and Canada promulgated a nearly identical rule covering uh, a rule, rule for window coverings two years ago. And there's no evidence that a longer effective date will significantly reduce the cost of compliance for manufacturers. So there's no good cause for longer effective date, and it is against the public interest to delay and allow children to continue to be strangled to death by non-compliant window coverings. This amendment isn't just a good idea, it was required. And I strongly support it. Thank you for introducing it. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Boyle. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for introducing this amendment. I echo what my colleague, Commissioner Trunka, just said. I support this approach. I have no questions, and I appreciate your introducing this. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Hearing no further questions on the amendment, uh, I thank my fellow commissioners for engagement and move to vote on it. Uh, Commissioner. Feldman, how do you vote? I vote yes. Commissioner Tromka? I vote yes. Commissioner Boyle? Yes. And I vote yes as well. The yes is a four, the no's are zero. The amendment in nature of substitutes adopted. Uh, does that, and now we're going to turn to see if anybody else has any additional amendments. Commissioner Feldman, do you have any amendments? I do not. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Tromka? I have none. And Commissioner Boyle? I don't have any either. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. Hearing no additional amendments, I move to approve the staff's draft final rule as amended and to direct publication of the same in the federal register. Is there a second? Second. 
We have a second. We can move to a vote. Commissioner Feldman, how do you vote? I vote yes. Commissioner Trumka? I vote yes. And Commissioner Boyle? I vote yes. And I vote yes as well. The yeses are four, the noes are zero. The motion is approved. The draft final rule as amended has been approved and shall be published in the Federal Register. At this point in time, we're going to have up to 10 minutes per commissioner for any closing remarks. Um, and I'm going to start. So, first of all, uh, I am so pleased that we have moved these rules forward today. I know that there are advocates and commission staff who have been working diligently on this issue for years. And today, finally, we got it done. Linda Kaiser with Parents for Window Blind Safety has been a uh, constant, consistent voice for safety, keeping the pressure on industry, on the CPSC to prevent future tragedies. Her organization, along with Consumer Federation of America, Consumer Reports, Kids in Danger, Public Citizen, US PERG, Independent Safety uh, Consulting, um, Safety Behavior Analysis, and Andre Shelton O'Leary and Patterson filed a petition eight years ago calling on a, for a mandatory standard for window coverings. Thank you for that filing and for keeping the focus on the issue for all of these years. I also want to thank my fellow commissioners for the support of my amendment, which will bring safer blinds to the public much faster and for supporting the underlying rule. As we see, and we always know, safety is not a partisan issue, and it's great to see us united together on this matter. Um, but our actions today are based on the hard work that's been done by staff, both current and former, over many years. And I'd like to take this opportunity to, to name and thank them. Um, you know, starting with some of the presenters today, you know, Dr. Rana Balchi Sinha, Mary House, Dan Weiss, Chris Nguyen, Howard Tarnoff, uh, Jennifer Colton, Kevin Lee, Mark Bailey, Sana uh, Chaudi, uh, Sua Wana Nakamura, Adrian Layton, Caroline Paul, Chen Su, Julie Kearns, Julia Kearns, sorry, Lisa Walker, Mark Gill, uh, Matthew Berzola, uh, Rick Kana, and Yoon Kim. And I apologize if I missed anybody, but I did want to highlight the individuals who actually do the work that form the basis of the commission's actions. And I think I said it last time, but it's true, nothing would be done without them, and they did deserve our recognition and thanks. So, once again, thank you to, to them and their fellow commissioners. I'm really glad that we we're able to get this done today. Commissioner Feldman, did you have a statement? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this, as you mentioned, is a, a long pending rulemaking, uh, and, and this is a hazard that has gone on for too long uh, as the now longest serving commissioner on this agency. I do have some historical perspective uh, on, on uh, you know, the, the, the commission's having dealt with this uh, for the past several years. Uh, in part, uh, I attribute the, uh, the the length of time that the commission has grappled with this uh, to what I view as an inappropriate reliance on behalf of uh, a number of uh, uh, previous chairmen of this agency and acting chairman uh, on uh, inappropriate reliance on, on industry commitments uh, to solve this matter in uh, the voluntary standards uh, bodies that ultimately uh, did not come to pass. I do want to congratulate this commission for finalizing uh, what uh, a, a regulation that that is going to minimize the strangulation risk for children associated with custom products. I also want to thank staff for their hard work uh, on this rulemaking uh, throughout the years. Uh, it feels good to get this across the finish line. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Trumka. When we determine that a product hazard is too unsafe to exist. Elimination of that hazard must quickly become reality. And we all fought together here to put this rule in place as quickly as possible so that we can save sons and daughters from being strangled to death. We've done our jobs and I'll sleep well tonight knowing that we prioritized children's lives over corporate profits and eliminated yet another hidden hazard from American homes. And I think one other thing is clear. For issues that have drawn on for too many years, this commission has shown a willingness that we will push those across the finish line. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Boyle. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, these rules come after many years of hard work by staff, and I do want to thank them for their conscientious efforts in advancing the package. And I join you, Mr. Chair, in giving special recognition to Linda Kaiser for her steadfast efforts to make today a reality. Um, I will have a longer written statement, but I do want to just uh, make this one point. Uh, once again, we are using our regulatory authority to make a difference in the lives of children and families. And I appreciate all of the efforts of staff and working with my colleagues on this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, thank you again to all the commissioners, um, the commissioner's staff as well. Um, they have made this um, a process where we be able to do this quickly. And I know there's a lot of work that went into what is now turning into a 20 minute meeting. So I just want to recognize them as well. And for the, the rest of the staff who I've named before who have been working years on this. So much appreciation. I'm really glad that we could get this done today for, for the public and for um, all of us. So this concludes today's decisional meeting of the Consumer Product Safety Commission. And that done.